Has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? Amen? That's right. Nothing surprises him. So whatever you're going through right now, guess what? He knew about it. And as uh, I've heard many people tell me, God's got this. Amen? He does. He does. Whatever it is, he's got this. The Lord blessed AJ and I with the opportunity this, uh, this past weekend, directly after last Sunday service, to head off to a conference that we typically go to on an annual basis, Saving One, where we got snowed in. So that's why I have such a big truck that's four-wheel drive, so that never happens again, just for that. We went there, and the Lord blessed us to overfilling. Next year, I'll be inviting several men uh, that we might carry you there so that you can experience the same blessing that we did. But I recall telling AJ as we were leaving this camp, and it literally is a Christian camp, and we were driving down the road on our way to, uh, to exit, and I told AJ, I said, you know, Satan hates us more now than he did when we got here. He said, yes, I know that. He said, he's going to be, he's pretty angry at us. He said, he's angry at all of us because you had about 110 pastors and lay leaders in one place getting filled to overflowing and then all of us dispersed, dispersed to our respective places and uh, that was a little difficult for Satan because he can only be in one place at one time. So he hated that, amen? We get under attack all the time and with the right perspective or right thinking, um, we can withstand any assault. And the attack is for you to start looking at your situation or your issues only and not looking at the king. It's the only thing that Satan wants you to do. It might be different, the situations that we experience, but what Satan's tactic is and his minions are to get you to take your eyes off of Jesus and for you to begin thinking about a particular situation or issue and you cannot see him anymore and therefore you do not depend on him anymore. And when you don't depend on him anymore, guess who you depend on? You. Self. Me. I've done it. You've done it. And Satan loves that. And I don't want to give him any praise or glory uh, in any of that. I want us to understand how Satan attacks us. The Lord wants us to understand his tactics and that we're not ignorant of his devices, the word of God tells us, that we are to know what he's trying to do. It's very simple. He might throw a bunch of different stuff at you, but ultimately what he wants you to do is take your eyes off of Jesus. And as soon as you do that, you will be weak. You will, be, you will feel defeated. You will feel like you want to do something to take control of the situation and you begin to operate on your own power instead of the power of the living God who dwells within us. That's what he wants. We're going to look at a few things uh, that the word of God tells us. So the, the thought process is really what he's, uh, is what he's after. And I shared... Uh, at the Bible conference, something that I don't know if I shared here, but God has perfectly made us. You know this, right? He has perfectly designed us. And, and we're made a certain way, and God knows it, and Satan understands it as well. Sometimes we don't understand what Satan's doing. So oftentimes, once we recognize what Satan, what Satan is doing, we can counter it very easily. In our minds, we've been designed to only be able to focus on a few things at a time, namely one, effectively. Multitaskers divide up their attention between two things, and you can, you can really only apply about 50% of your attention to both. Those that spend their time on five things, you're about 20% effective in each area. But if you really want to focus on something and you want to get something done, it requires a dedicated effort of 100%. Focus and dedication. Satan knows that if he can pull your attention away and you can begin to think on something else, then you can't actually focus 100%. Our minds are designed within our brains, right in the center, at the very tip of our brain stem is the reticular formation. And with the reticular formation, this is where everything that comes into our lives filters through this. And our mind 
will ignore so many other things to try to focus on this one particular thing. You've ever been driving down the road and you're on the phone and you miss your exit? You didn't see the exit. Why? Because your reticular activation system could not pick up on it because you're focused on something else. It works out very easily, and I want to show you something just in demonstration. I want you to look around the room, and I want you to look for something blue. Just look around the room. Take the time. Just look around the room. Look for something blue. Look for something blue. You feel like you found it? You found something blue. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Come on, we can do this. Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. And I want you to tell me something that you saw that was green. The mind didn't pick up on anything that was green, did it? Now you can open your eyes. Everybody's trying to blink and I see something green now. You might be wearing a green shirt and you couldn't identify green. There's a green Christmas tree over here and they're always green every year, all of your life. But because you were looking for something blue, the reticular activation system did not pick up on green. And this is what Satan wants to do. Satan wants you to take your eyes off of the Lord and focus on something else. Wherefore, you cannot see his goodness. You cannot see his grace. You cannot see his mercy. You cannot see his power in the situation. And all you can focus on is what Satan is doing to you and not what God is doing for you and through you and through the circumstance of your life. Amen? That's how we work, and Satan knows it, and God knows it because he designed us to focus on him. And when we focus on him, everything else pales in comparison. There's a song that says, I turn my eyes upon Jesus, and I look into his wonderful face. And the things of this earth grow strangely dim in the light of of his glory and grace. It's true, isn't it? That's a beautiful song. Anybody want to sing it right now? Okay. I love it. That's how it actually works. So we're to guard our thought life and be careful what comes into our minds. Be careful what you take in. There's another song that has like children singing and it's talking about watching our eyes what we actually allow to come in to our thought processes. And they only come in through a few ways. They come in through the ear gate and the eye gate. The things that you see and the things that you hear are the things that are going to change our perspective if we allow them to. And this is what Solomon's instruction is here on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right, turn not to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Remove thy foot from evil. One of the greatest things I think is causing destruction in our land is impurity of all sorts. Corruption abounds in every area of life and society and even in our homes. We are not guarding and protecting our very household from the assaults of Satan. And he has the opportunity to come into the home very quickly. Men, I want you to know that Satan wants to destroy you. You are the head of the household. Regardless, right now, I think that it's uh, very politically correct not to say that. But the reality of it is, you are. You're the head of the household. And your, your family is the body. And Satan knows that if he can cut the head off, what happens to the body? The body dies. He knows that. You must understand that. You must know that. Watch what comes into your home. You are a guardian of your home. If you do not guard your home, no one else will. The uh, ladies in the homes who, who's, uh, who don't have husbands or single, whatever the case may be, then that would most certainly apply to you. You are a second wave of defense in your home if your husband is standing strong. Otherwise, you are that person that must guard your home. Guard what comes into your minds. There is a, uh, a huge issue today with pornography. 
It's very easy to get access to. You used to have to go to a store and embarrass yourself to ask for a magazine, men. And today, you can sit in the confines of your study where you reserve it for praising the Lord or studying, and you can access it very readily and easily. So therefore, there is now into every home direct access to impurity. There is a sewer system that runs directly into every single home. And statistically speaking, this used to be a problem with men. And it's more and more becoming a problem with women because we're watching society degenerate. And so now this is actually a way to, if you want to ask Satan into your homes, check out pornography. And you invite demons directly into your home. Every guard is down and you invite lustful spirits and spirits of fornication, but they don't run alone. The destroyer follows soon thereafter and will come into your home and will ravage your home and destroy it. Last uh, week, I was asked to help a brother who has a very successful and very good reputation in remodeling. And I thought it was very interesting because the, the job that I told him that I would do for him, uh, their septic system ruptured on the third floor of their condominium. And this septic water and gunk leaked out onto the ceiling, through the ceiling and onto the floor, and then along, the, along the, the perimeter of the room, and they had to bring in a special team to remove all of the sheetrock that was contaminated and, and, and spray everything down and remove all the walls on the lower part up to about a foot. It's pretty destructive. It moves very quickly. At first, it started hidden up in the ceiling, and nobody knew. You hear me? Started off in the ceiling and nobody knew that this feces and urine, nasty foulness was oozing out over the ceiling, penetrating the sheetrock until it collapsed into the home and began to destroy the floors and the walls and ate it up like a cancer. You hear me? takes a lot of work. You can prevent that. The things that you see, the things that you watch, you will begin to think about. And the things that you think about, you will begin to watch and see. Our minds are designed this way. The Lord wants us to think pure thoughts Therefore, the things that we see and hear should be pure. And I'll tell you something that's very interesting is you cannot fight evil with evil. The Bible tells us that we fight evil with what? Good. You know what he's telling us? If you walk around saying, I don't want to lust, 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 I don't want to cuss, I don't want to cuss, I don't want to cuss, I don't want to be angry, I don't want to be angry, I don't want to be angry. You thinking about that every single moment of the day, you are going to be in lust all day long. You're going to be angry all day long. You're going to be uh, perverse in your language all day long because that's all you're thinking about. The Bible tells us, just like we said earlier, that the things that we're to think about should, should be positive. Not only pure, but positive. So here's something interesting about a man or woman who has a filthy mouth. They have a filthy heart. A man or woman who is angry has an angry heart. Dirty thoughts, dirty heart. It's the things that we've been putting in manifest themselves coming out. Because out of the treasures of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen? That's how this works. Think on things that are pure. Think on things that are 
positive. And I'll tell you right now, the word of God is where I found my greatest source of, of positive affirmations for my life. Because it's powerful. The word of God is powerful. Sharper than what? Any two-edged sword. Two sword. Doing what? Piercing. Piercing the heart. Dividing even the spirit and the soul. It's a precision tool. Not a chainsaw. Precision. It's very powerful. Very amazing. So I say this only because... This is one area, just one, where we find ourselves bringing in things that are going to harm our home. And as God doesn't want our houses harmed, he wants our houses and homes whole. Amen? That's what he wants for us. So pornography itself is just one of many, but it is one that is very prevalent. As a matter of fact... I think that this movement into same-sex marriages and transgenderism and all this stuff is perpetrated by the, 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 the prolific use of pornography in our society, the prevailing use of pornography in our society. It's corrupting men's minds and women's today. It is psychological poison for many people. It's a social sickness for our society. It's a domestic disaster for your home. And it's spiritual suicide for your soul. Amen? That's the reality. You need to get away from it if it is the case. Lust conceives sin and sin conceives death. James says that. James says that. So here's what the, the Word of God does for us. I, I mention that one because it's one that's not tagged very often as being a problem. And if you've got a problem with it, I, I assure you, you need to remove it because it could be the, the root cause of a lot of the problems in your home because you have invited demons to attack you, attack your home, devour you, and destroy you. Inviting other demons into your home to attack your wife and your children your friends, and everything else that touches this. So the most amazing thing about God is that we can never get so far from him that we can't turn to him and repent. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Satan doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to keep the trash in the ceiling. And he wants to lie to you and say the ceiling will never collapse. It's okay. It's hidden up there. But eventually, it will come and it will destroy. Amen? It's the truth. It's the truth. So one of the things when we bring in good things, all these pure things, when we begin to, to think pure, positive, powerful thoughts about who God is, everything else begins to seem small. And you will notice a change in your life. I believe it's in a, a Romans chapter 12 that we are to renew our minds, amen? We're to renew our minds. And when we do this, even in this word right here out of Proverbs chapter 4, it is going to govern our speech, it is going to guard our sight, and it's going to guide our steps, amen? Does anybody want that in their lives? I know I do. I know Satan wants to devour every single person in here. He wants to win over your thought processes. And if he wins over your thought process, he's going to win over your speech. And we've been given a beautiful gift that in our mouths is the ability to build or destroy. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you can build or you can destroy and you can easily see who's in control of your life based on what you say. You tell me what a man thinks, and I'll tell you who he is. Because what he says is who that man is. The things that are coming out of our mouths, so the Word of God says, the things that are coming out of our mouths should not be forward. They should not be perverse. 
If froward things are coming out of a man's mouth or perverse things are coming from his lips, I'll tell you right now, that man is a froward and perverse man. I'm sorry. That's just how it works. What should be coming out of our mouths is life. Life. Edification. Building up. It says here in verse 24, Put away from thee froward, a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. To guard your sight, in verse 25, it says, Let thine eyes look right on. And let thine eyelids look straight before you. Job made a covenant with his eyes to look straight on, to keep his focus dedicated and straight. Now, I, I want to uh, suggest to us that we keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen. We sing a song about keeping our eyes on Jesus in the storm that's raging around us. You've made mention that a storm can rage around us. And if we keep our eyes on the Lord and we don't try to affect it, because you can stick your hand out in it and you can take a blow, a blast from that storm. Or you can keep yourself right with God. And you can walk through any storm because your sight is right on, like the Word of God says. I like that. Right on. Let thine eyes look right on, dedicated, straight, focused. And in this, God guides our steps. He guides our steps. When our thought processes are on him, our speech is tamed by him because it's a flame, a fire. I can either set you on fire for the Lord or I can set you on fire for Satan with my mouth. I can do it. I want to protect the things that I hear, protect the things that I see coming in that are changing my perspective. And amazingly enough, without any effort at this point in time, if you do this without effort on your part, God will guide your steps. And you won't turn to the left and you won't turn to the right because he's your focus. And all you hear is his voice and all you see is his face. And every single one of your steps is ordered by the Lord of glory. If you don't have that today, you can. If there's something that you've been focusing on other than Jesus Christ, you can change that today, amen? You don't have to wait till next week. You don't have to go through a 12-step program. You can do it today by your mouth. Confess your sins to him. He is faithful and just to forgive you. And to restore you. Keep your eyes on him. If you've been having your eyes on something else, it's not proper. If you've been having, it's Texan. You can change your perspective today. And turn your eyes upon Jesus. And when you do that, I assure you, you're going to hear his voice. You're going to hear his guidance. And you will notice Amazingly enough, without much effort at this point, that God is guiding your steps. Regardless of what's happening, you know he's involved. Your eyes are on him, and all of your steps are ordered by him. I want to read this passage just one last time so it gets in deep. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Do you want to remove your feet out of the traps of Satan? Follow this, the word of the living God. Allow him to restore you, renew you, to renew your mind, to change your focus, to purify your perspective. Amen? He will do it today, right now.
if you would close your eyes, bow your heads just for a moment. Most people don't like to do this for some reason. There's something in your life right now that you want to turn over to the Lord, but you don't know how. You have been struggling and trying, and the efforts have been by your own power, your own resolve, your own discipline, and you're realizing that it's not enough. And it will never be enough. Because the only one who can help, who can make you whole, who can strengthen your life, who can change your perspective, who can change your speech, who can change what you watch, what you look at, and what you hear, who can change the path that you're on today is Jesus and him alone. He wants to do that for you today. Do you want that for your life? You can give it to him today. If that's something that you want, and I just want to pray, no one's looking, all heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. The Lord is looking down on this room right now, and he knows this. And all he wants you to do is acknowledge that you need him to do it.